Hey everyone, this is the LEGO City main square set. All of these things come in one single box. All those figures, different types of objects as well, you know, ranging from a motorcycle to a building that's actually fairly tall. So I'm gonna go through all of this somewhat casually, but I do wanna let you know that I am going to do multiple videos about this one set, looking at it from multiple perspectives. So stay tuned for those. Normally I would give a little overview of everything we're going to be looking at, but we don't have time for all that. Let's get right into the details. Pretty much everything in this set is based off or inspired by the Lego City Adventures animated TV series. So if you've watched that series, and I do recommend it if you want just a little bit of extra Lego related entertainment, regardless of your age, you'll end up uh, recognizing some things throughout this, including some smaller details, as well as the major things like this right here is intended to be a really, really scaled down and really simplified version of City Hall from that show. So you've got the, the main en entrance down here, a couple doors that open, a little bit of detail up above, a couple of animals that were seen in episodes uh, throughout. And a major thing to keep in mind with this entire set, with every single thing that you see here, is that this is a six plus set. It's designed for kids six years old and up. So that's you know, a fairly low bar, and that explains why a lot of the the uh, construction methods are pretty straightforward. Like, almost everything on this entire build here is done with just, you know, studs straight up, just large blocks placed on top of each other, a handful of studs on the side, items, uh, not a whole lot of detail, like not a whole lot of greebling, you know, texture and all that kind of stuff. A lot of that is missing, which, uh, well depending upon your age, may just not look good to you. To me, uh, I appreciate the size of it. I appreciate how quickly it went together. But yeah, it's definitely lacking in detail. The first floor down here has some valuables. So you got a trophy over there, another one over on the other side. It's like a, it's like a grail of some sort. And then this is the key to the city. So this has rotating laser beams that go around that you got to look out for. Uh, you know, of course, use your imagination think that all of this is actually closed off so there's only access for figures to come in from the other side. There's a, a, a security camera right there just kind of angled in also looking at that but yeah access to get figures in here is rather limited like you can put a figure or two on each side over here each of these little side wings and these are attached by just Technic pins so you can pull all that off if you want but there's no other way to put it together it's not really a modular system or anything like that. But, you know, this is just really simple. So this is basically just a, a display case. Uh, it doesn't even have glass over the, the front or the back of it. So you could easily, again, depending upon what you want to do with your imagination, just imagine somebody comes around the back and just grabs the thing. That's that. This is the mayor's office up here. Also very simple. Has his desk. I actually folded up his laptop computer just to basically make it so that it wouldn't run all all around as I transported this around. But yeah, it's a laptop computer and a, a briefcase there. And he's got some morning, you know, pick-me-ups, some uh, breakfast items there. Single letter. This is just a uh, the, the nice version of a proper Lego umbrella. His seat is elevated by just a single plate underneath it there. And he's got a clock over on the side. And that's that. That's really it for the details of the largest thing, the most major thing in the entire set. This space up here, uh, it's like a closet, like a maintenance closet, but there's nothing in it whatsoever. It's a two by two uh, space inside of it. And no, well, that's just that. There's supposed to be a bell up here. So definitely a, a bit of a lack of, of detail for that. Sticker used there. Oh yeah, there's one other sticker on the side. Down here, another little show reference to one particular episode. And I will point out that, or I will note uh, that there are a lot of color issues with this because it uses dark red, the cursed color, the most cursed of colors that Lego has ever had for color consistency or rather the lack thereof. So, I mean, it, you just look at any area with the dark red on pretty much any Lego set and you'll see massive differences and that's not okay. I mean, we've had to deal with it as Lego fans for years and years and years now. Lego is supposed to be like the best of the best, you know, high quality stuff. I am disappointed in that. And uh, they should be too. And they really need to fix that. It, it shouldn't be this bad. It's not good. It's not a good look. 
I would expect this little diner to be one of the more loved things in this set for people of all ages because, well, I mean, it just, it looks nice. It does rely on stickers, definitely, for a fair amount of its detail on the outside. And that sticker sheet, let me tell you, the sticker sheet that I got in this set, I was really unlucky. It's so offset. Like the red outline there that you see just on the right and the top, it's supposed to actually be even all the way around. Just where it was cut is that far off. So you can see it again on the open sign on the front. It's supposed to be centered. Uh, yeah, so it's just completely offset. You also see scratches on the windows. That's because of the newer material, which is not as resistant to scratches as the old. And you know, it's actually a different, uh, different chemical that they're using. Uh, to form the plastic for transparent pieces now. It's supposed to be less toxic, I suppose, and there are rules requiring them to change from the old. Anyway, it takes scratches more frequently, and those scratches just occurred during shipment from the factory, ultimately to me. You know, it's not my own, my own doing. I do want to point out that this burger is unique. It's not a design that they've used before because it uses, very happy to see, the uh, Super Mario uh, you know, large scale playset piece right here. This brown part, you see how the, the corners are there? It's a, a Super Mario platform piece, a smaller platform piece. So I, I was really happy to see that actually in use here. I like how this can spin. I could just imagine that spinning slowly in, in universe, in real life. This has two doors on the front to let you get in there. This really does not have good access to get us, our fingers in here to put minifigures in there. Best access is around the back, but it doesn't have a good system for removing the roof. That's a little bit disappointing because, like, how do you get a person to sit down there? You have to have tiny hands. And even at that, it can be a little bit frustrating. One relatively small uh, burger there that actually can be held in the hand of a minifigure. It has a, an, an open uh, anti-stud on the underside of it. I uh, got some condiments there. Checkout register. Uh, what's that? Storage for money? I'm, I, I'm assuming this is really the kitchen area over here. A little area with the coffee dispenser, stove. It's got a range with a hood over the top of it. Uh, there's also a pot inside of this little cupboard down there at the base. And that's that. It's simple. I really wish it had more access, but I do like the look of the thing from pretty much every angle. It, 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 always. We get buildings that are open around the back, but feel like this can be finished off completely. If you want to elevate it, finish it off by just putting a flat back on it. And I think it looks pretty nice. I also like the sign too. Now this light rail tram triggered a lot of controversy before the release of this set. Uh, if I recall correctly, some people had seen pictures of it and then started describing like pictures of the box art before the picture really started to circulate a lot. And then once people saw the picture, it looked just on the front of the box like this was a monorail. And people got their hopes up about the return of monorail to Lego, but it, it's not. Uh, we'll talk about the box a little bit more later on, but it's it's just another tram. Like the last one that they did that was really nice was the, the orange colored one from another set similar to this ultimately. And well, it's a, it's a little light rail thing. It will run on regular Lego tracks. Any of the tracks that they've made since the, I don't know, since the beginning, it's like just their standard gauge. So that's good. This is articulated in the center. And to get access inside of this, we'll just take one end for an example. All this pops up. This is just a recolor to regular yellow. Come on, come on. Ah, I'm trying to get that to separate in there. What's going on? There we go. Just a little bit tight. Uh, just a recolor of the most recent train nose piece that they did in flame yellowish orange or orangish yellow. Now it's just regular yellow. Okay, I'm surprised that they did uh, another of this you know major piece in such a similar color. Usually they will go for a very different color. But so interior the portions here, I'll just break this off to make it easier to angle it to you. You put a driver there, and you know the front and rear ends are identical. You got a console in front. It's all elevated up. There's a door on either side. That's nice to actually have access for the figures to get in and out. And for us, well, we just take the roof off and we can get our fingers in there a little bit better. Only two seats per car, two seats in the front, two seats in the, well, the other front, right? This is another front. It doesn't really matter. Nothing in the middle. 
So I guess people can just stand in there. I feel like the orange tram was a little bit better in that way. They actually uh, suggested that you store or transport a bicycle in the middle there. The, that one also had more seats. It's easy to fit more people in here than they did. So that's that's too bad. It like needs modification. Uh, these little tiles on the sides, I'll, I appreciate the idea there, but the fact that this stripe does not continue through kind of breaks it to me, just aesthetically. I wish that that had just been a little bit more continuous there. If this was all yellow, it would make more sense to my eyes. There's also a train platform here, which is small and fairly simple, but pretty decently detailed. And we've got a vending machine over here with some of the Vita, what's it called? I keep forgetting, Vita Rush. Yes, Vita Rush. I like that. I like that branding that they came up with. They've used it on some vehicles. It's nice to get the actual Vita Rush canisters in this. So this is intended to be a two layer vending machine. Again, you can see just how far off the, uh, the cut was on my sticker sheet. Not everybody should have that problem. As a matter of fact, most people shouldn't have that problem, but mm, nobody should have it, you know. Uh, I, I actually like the sticker designs and overall, I mean, this is a efficient use of space and it's got a single uh, stairway on the side. It's yeah, it's, it's basic, but it does the job. It only works for a single car, obviously. But, you know, it lines up decently well. Not too much of a gap to mind in there. And, yeah, again, good use of the parts count, I think. These two structure builds can be used together or separately. This is part of a, a scaled-down version of the park or section of the main city park. And then this is a concert stage, which could be for a concert that occurs at the park. Use your imagination how you want to there. This is intended to be used by Poppy Star, who would use the single microphone stand there in the middle. Uh, any backup singers or dancers have enough space around the, the edges, so that's nice. Now, the platform is not as small as it could possibly be to just hold a single figure, <laughs> like, like Lego us usually does. And I like the speakers. They're large, you can kind of rotate them around a bit. And I like the light bar up above. You can individually change the angles of these to make it look a little bit more alive. So this works. And I think is a good use of the number of pieces uh, that are, you know, that, that were taken out of the budget for this, including the barriers in the front. Like it just, it just makes sense. It works for me. And then the park area over here, this is fairly small. Uh, probably has the most details of any of the single builds in this set. Uh, probably my favorite thing here, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say my favorite thing is is what they did at the base of each tree. Just the fact that that's rounded, that space is rounded off, it's kind of nice. What I like least here is the fact that the the chairs are just on the ground. It feels kind of sad to me. Like, they should have been elevated at least by a single plate underneath each. Just putting them directly on the ground just feels undignified to me. Also, this pathway up the center with just plain plates, excuse me, plain tiles, no studs for, you know, figure feet to attach to, and then ultimately coming up to this rounded area, the rounded fountain area around the, the statue. Yeah, it just looks a little bit unfinished to me. Off to the side, you got this single table with some Lego storage container units there with possibly gifts or some stuff for putting together lunch, a couple of food items off to the side. The trees are fairly simple, again, six plus build, but at least you do build the trees, you know, they're not fully pre-made. A couple kind of banister railing areas off to the side, and that main, oh, I do like the, the colors, how this whole thing is colorful, mostly because of this string here. But the, uh, the statue is of Horatio Hubbs, who was talked about in just one episode for just a brief time. Going back into time, he's an ancestor of Harl Hubs, one of the main characters, main recurring characters in the set, uh, or in the entire universe of Lego City Adventures. Uh, back in the day, way, way back in the day, long, long time ago, the city was under siege by a pirate named Captain uh, Nosepatch. That's what it was, Nosepatch. He actually had a patch over his nose rather than one eye. This guy freed himself, used the cutlass there, never got his shackles removed from his, his bondage, and uh, 
well, yeah, even after he freed the city from the the tyranny of Captain No <laughs> Captain Nosepatch, uh, still nobody took the shackles off. That's that's actual in universe story. Just if you haven't seen Lego City Adventures, it's full of self deprecating stuff and uh, tries to be extra extra silly with things. But yeah, obviously kind of inspired by Robin Hood here, but not fully. A couple of emergency response vehicles here, just fairly basic stuff. You know, ATV has a single clip on the back to hold on to some handcuffs. Got the light and the antenna. Single person can ride this and that's that. And, you know, for a six plus set, this kind of seems about right to me. As does the helicopter, which is built up. Like, you know, you actually have to properly assemble it. It's not based off a single fuselage piece like a five plus set would would have it done um <laughs> use the printed piece back here which has the wrong set number on it but that i think that's fine perfectly fine with that I do wish the rotors were longer um big old scratch on the canopy piece unfortunately single person will sit in there and this is for catching things like for example you could uh you know rescue a cat or something but yeah this is what it is straightforward Here's a non-emergency vehicle. I actually really like the overall look of this as a stretched limo from Lego. I think the tires stick out just a little bit much. I wish they were brought in, but I mean, overall the proportions of this, a lot of people hate it on it. I personally think it looks kind of cool. And it's got the doors that you can open. What I like least about this is the fact that the side view mirrors are made with those large light gray pieces that don't really fit in. But other than that, I like the black and the choice of the, the, not yellow, but yellowish orange or orange yellow color for the line there. Kind of works with the, the gold used for the wheels and everything. And the build for this is pretty straightforward. It actually uses two car chassis pieces to get the occupants down fairly low and to get access in there. For us, we can open this up and we can also pull all this up as well. So holds really I mean, you could get an additional person in there, but it's really intended to have just a single passenger, a single VIP passenger, and then the driver up front. Driver gets a printed console piece and the steering wheel. Passenger gets a table with a faux wood finish and a TV up there. You gotta kind of squint because it is a little bit far away from you. And you could potentially put something right here as well as a little bit of extra, uh, you know, just some, some simple, small luggage. So overall, I think this is effective. And again, for something that's rated six plus, it's not bad. Definitely could have been worse. This really funky looking little cart is the personal work vehicle of handyman Harl Hubs. And I think this looks uh, reasonably similar to the one on the show. I mean, he carries around all kinds of crazy stuff, including a lot more than this frequently. So it's just adorned with all sorts of random stuff. And I mean, he can use this chain here. It's already hooked up. Got a ladder on the side. I mean, he's got a personal flotation device, dynamite, uh, popcorn. I mean, some of these items have actually been used in the weirdest ways on the show in unexpected ways for comedic effect. So I appreciate that. Got the life uh, uh, saver ring there and a faucet. And overall, this works pretty well. The, the rear tire is not quite right um, per the show. I guess they could have used the newer mold for not a bicycle, but a tricycle that has like just a single wheel on the back and then you can attach whatever you want to the front. But I'm assuming that that was thought about and then discarded as an idea. It might've been too complex or a little bit too limiting. So this build, I mean, it looks terrible to people who don't understand the context of it. But to me, recognizing what it is from the show to other folks who have seen the show as well, I think this should work pretty well. Last little transportation items here before we dive into the figures. We've got a skateboard for a little Billy there. Just a regular bicycle, nothing special there. And then a motorcycle for a Snake Rattler, the character. Uh, I, I really like the look of these unfared uh, motorcycles, the most recent ones that LEGO has done. Plus you can customize them because they have some attachment points. So those, those are good to me. 
So many figures in this set, and a bunch of them are named characters from the City Adventures universe. So left to right, this is the mayor of the town. It's Mayor Fleck. This is handyman Harl Hubs, and that's Poppy Star there. And we'll just keep it going. So new color for the the corn cob guy uh, outfit. Now he's just a yellow on dark green, and there's a print underneath there as well. New uh, torso print for Poppy Star. It's unique to this set so far. I appreciate the fact that Harl Hubs in the middle is fully decked out. Like he's got the utility belt and he has print for the legs and even going through the hip as well. Looking underneath this one, there's print on that torso. Also, unfortunately, that sash won't go around his outer, uh, his outer outfit. And behind here, you're also gonna see a bunch of alternate faces throughout this set. So nothing for him, unfortunately. That's a good one. That's a good one as well. And pretty good stuff here in general. Here we have Duke Detain, Freya McLeod, and bad guy uh, Snake Rattler. Duke Detain gets the dual molded arms, which actually look really good. This time around, Freya has her unique, not unique to this set, but unique to her uh, print for her mug there to have some hot cocoa, not coffee. And dual molded hairpiece for her as well with the fireman's hat built into that. Good prints on the backs of these torsos. Yes, do like those. Alternate face there for Duke Detain is not too different. You know, both are happy faces, but that does work. It is useful for him. Alternate face for Freya McLeod is excellent because that's straight out of the show. She often will spit, uh, you know, just when surprised or aghast suddenly with with news, she'll she'll spit out the the hot cocoa that she's sipping while the mug is still to her face, and then it'll look like that. So that's that's unique and cool to see that they actually did that. The two characters on the left here are also named. I don't remember their names quite offhand, but they were both McClouds. He is the brother of Freya McCloud, so that's the sister-in-law of Freya McCloud. I remember that face from the show, but I don't remember. Uh, where she was or what she was doing. Might have had a different torso as well. But, I mean, these are just ultimately regular people, you know, just regular citizens, and they're good to see. Um, you know, variety of ha happy expressions, prints around the backs of the torsos as well, uh, different colors for, you know, unusual colors for the legs, and alternate faces for all three. Now, this is the train driver slash conductor. This is the limo driver, and that's just another random person. May have actually had uh, a cameo on the show. I don't recall in particular. Things that stand out here for me, this doesn't look like an appropriate outfit for this day and age. It just looks a little, a little dated. Um, and, you know, just the color scheme doesn't match with, like, the, com the company colors for the tram here. Also... His face is poor. Like the printing quality is just really bad. I got really unlucky, excuse me, with that one. It just, yeah, it's just wrong. Kind of needs to be replaced. And then finally, over here on the right, uh, there, there's been a bunch of controversy about this officially. This is the first ever Lego character to have a hearing aid. Officially, that is a hearing aid. A lot of people will see it as a Bluetooth earpiece. It's only on one side, which is odd. Makes it seem more like a Bluetooth earpiece, but officially, according to a Lego employee, it is a hearing aid. But if you want it to represent a Bluetooth uh, earpiece, then go for it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Lego in the future uses that officially as a representation of a Bluetooth earpiece. I mean, it's just a piece of plastic with a print on it. So either way you use it, it's nice to get something new. And uh, yeah, the, the, the quality is pretty good. And the quality of that face also, you know, it's a new design. And it's printed really, really well, unlike dude over here. Lastly, these are Billy and Madison. And, well, they're kids and they look cool. They look really happy. Uh, the propeller piece here can be used for all sorts of adventures if you use your imagination a little bit or just follow the show. And I like the hair piece on the right as well as the, the smile. Got an alternate smile there as well. That's a that's a cool face. Just Just so genuinely deeply jovial you know it's like not uh, it could be laughing or could just be just super happy so yeah you know, it just brings a smile to my face too these are the spare leftover pieces and you can see there are some nice little items to get in there that are relatively uncommon so uh, not a whole lot of pieces given the size of the set but 
some nice individual items. And then this is the spent sticker sheet and you can just see immediately how offset the cut is. It's, <laughs> I got really, really unlucky with this one, unfortunately. The number of stickers I feel is okay for the set. It would have been better with fewer, but it's not bad, you know, for how many things you build. The set sells for $200 US, which does feel like definitely too much to me for the amount of stuff that you get here. Uh, yeah, just adding up the, the values of the things that I see here, it does not come close to that. I wanna see this a good 20, 25% off to start with. Unfortunately, I do believe it's a lego.com exclusive, it may show up at like one retailer in each country at, at at the most, but I don't see this being discounted anytime soon, which is unfortunate. Now, why, while I do have the box up here, I did want to address the issue of the box art, particularly with respect to the tram that is not a monorail, but yeah, you, know, you see how, I mean, that that's pretty, that's pretty important. It's pretty integrated how they put the, the background of the, the elevated track, a suggestion of elevated track there. Um, it, it doesn't look to my eyes like they were really de deceiving us. Um, it's easy for an older fan to get hopes up, definitely. But when I look at this, I don't see deception, personally. I see exactly what that is. It's just a tram with standard width uh, wheels. It'll go on regular tracks, but no tracks are included here. But you know, that's kind of where a lot of the, the, uh, the hate for this came from, or the disappointment in that came from. It was from a single image that was that was posted early of this when it was put up for sale long before it was supposed to be. And I just realized I did say lego.com exclusive. It wouldn't be lego.com. It's a Lego store exclusive. So online or not. Uh, but that's the main place that, that you're going to be finding this set. And around the back of the box, if you do look at this in person, you know, you're going to see a little bit more context of exactly what you do get, including uh, just the honest truth of how simple the main major build actually is. Question for you, maybe a little bit of a thought provoker or something to get conversation going in comments. Did it feel like I was making excuses for some things that are not so good in this set as I went along? Because I kind of was intentionally. To me, context matters. And the fact that this is a six plus set matters. Like. If it was in a black box and designed and presented as a 18 and adult collector set, then I would definitely have been much, much more harsh on this. And I think that's appropriate, right? Like it, it doesn't make sense to judge a six plus set with the same set of criteria and the same expectations as like a creator expert modular building or something like that. I don't expect modular building level of detail. I didn't, I don't expect this to be even like the modular town hall, which itself wasn't even that great uh, by today's standards with detail and such. But I don't expect this to be that good being something that's specifically designed for success for a six year old to put it together. Context matters, I think. I think the, the art of establishing and recognizing and adapting to context is unfortunately an increasingly lost concept these days. People like to just either jump on something and hate it or jump on it and love it. And that's, it's like black or white, one or, one or the other. And I, I feel like there's a lot of room for, for in between. So I try to recognize that and use context as a little bit of a compass along the way. All that said though, I still am a Lego fan myself and I am not in the six plus demographic. I'm like six plus, 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 six squared plus, 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 six squared plus six plus, plus no. uh, <laughs> personally, I don't find a lot here to be exciting. I think that the figure selection is, is one of the, the best things, one of the best single features of this. There were a lot of figure details there that are really nice. I like this. Um, I, I like the limo more than most people. I think that this is a good effective use of space. Beyond that, yeah, to me, it's it's fine. Like it's it's okay. It's difficult for me to judge something that's this big and this expensive as a set for really young kids. You know, just a step or two above Duplo 
I mean, think about that. You know, you Duplo is like up to four, maybe five, and you get to five, and then you get to the simplest versions of sets, and this is like one year after that. That's what this is made for, and it is designed with Lego's whole uh, whole um, uh, build together initiative, where they've got different bags to create different different objects along the way, and they're separated with different uh, uh, different instruction sheets, and they actually give you little little bits of of hints in the beginnings of those instruction sheets. To say, hey, if you've got a family of this many people, then consider giving these tasks to one person, these tasks to another person. Like that's nice, you know. That, that makes sense, and, and I appreciate that. But overall, yeah, it's difficult for me to look at this and get too excited about it. I don't feel like it's a great set, even for the six plus demographic. Like there's just nothing here that works really that well. This big major build that a lot of pieces go into, it has height. Like it, it, has, it has substance to it as viewed from the outside especially, but you go around the back and there's not that much you can actually do within it to play within it. This is useful. Like for a kid who, who is interested in music and wants to put on a concert, that is definitely a good thing to play with. I personally, even as an adult, like the diner, but it's not that great to play with, unfortunately. Uh, helicopter is helicopter. I mean, the little stuff is little stuff. This is okay. It's just, it's just okay. I'm not talking about the statue, I'm talking about the whole plate, right? And then finally the tram. Me being a train guy, you know, I'm gonna leave this for last because it's the most important thing to me. Well, it just has too few seats. The last one of this same size had twice as many seats and that wasn't a lot. Like you can fit more into that space, but it's not a great use of the space. I am very glad that this will run on regular Lego rails though. I mean, it won't actually run on its own, but you know, you can put it on rails and you can push it around. So that's fine. It's, it's look is eh. It's all right, you know, it's not great. So, oh, my bet just knocked off part of the tree. Okay, we can rebuild it. Better than it was before? No, just exactly the same as it was before. Those are my thoughts for now. My regular thoughts from a regular review perspective. But like I said, I will be doing more about this set soon. So stay tuned for some different views from the same person about the same stuff. For now, if you want to see how this went together, I've got the real-time build and also the speed build. Those should be up. If not by now, if you're an early viewer of the review, then they'll be up soon. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I'll talk to you again soon.